So this is an overview of the design and validation step. First, we saw the concept stage. Next, we saw the design and validation stage. So this design and validation stage overview is like this. You first set the target uh, for the whole vehicle and for the component level and system level. Then you design the preliminary prototype of the vehicle at first. You don't have to build the actual product you are imagining. You can build a similar product with the existing uh, material available and then test with the preliminary prototype. You will get some idea how it behaves, how the requirements are met. Then you go for the component design, then you go for the system design, finally integrate the product. Parallelly, you test each system and components and finally go for the production. So this, this is just an overview of what we just saw in detail in the previous pages. And finally, it comes to the production stage. We started from concept stage, proceeded for the design and development stage, finally into the production stage. Production stage, of course, controlled by uh, the cost, time, and feasibility have to be confirmed because every design, every imagination cannot be made into a product. There are some uh, many limitations which have to be considered before designing and producing a product. So based on this cost, time, feasibility study, the manufacturing process of each part will be decided and the production simulations will be made. Similar to the testing which we saw in the previous page, production simulations are also now being conducted. Of course, both physically and in, the, in using the FEA. And then the actual tools for the producing the part is being developed. So this is the production stage after which the vehicle will be rolled out for sales. But one thing which we need to consider is when the production stage starts from the feasibility study, the development cost will be basically low. So any design change, for example, you made a design proposal, after sometimes you want to change the design proposal because it doesn't meet the, let's say the component level requirement. So this have to be informed at this time itself to maintain the planned cost of the development. If you delay, for example, you design a part here and you find out it doesn't meet the requirement and you want to change the design at this step, the development cost increases from here to here. So this is basically the unwanted cost you are going to spend because you do not highlight this design uh, change requirement at the beginning of the development or production stage. So similarly, your design change at each timing will directly impact your development cost. So one thing we should keep in mind, whatever you propose, you plan it well and propose it at the beginning itself. Any late changes will cost you a lot of money during the development process. Finally, uh, coming to the challenges of the automobile development, uh, one by one, we can see many, many challenges, but they can be grouped uh, into somewhere like six items. So one is the market dynamics. Uh, market dynamics means the customer's mindset is changing rapidly day by day. Uh, two years ago, a different type of headlamp was liked by customers. But now you see the Hyundai Creta and Hyundai Venue, etc. The headlamp design itself, the design concept itself is completely different, but still people are liking it. So the product which were planned with the two years previous headlamp shape, if it has been planned for 10 years, you cannot sell that product for the next eight years because the customer's requirement has changed now. So this rapidly changing customer needs have to be considered while making the development and planning for the product development. Second is trade-off. Of course, trade-off is a very difficult uh, thing to manage because I will say, being a crash engineer, I will say the product should crash. But being a uh, durability engineer, someone will say, no, the product should not crash because the strength will reduce. Technically speaking, this is where the trade-off happens. To a broad extent, you can say uh, uh, from the uh, uh, marketing point of view, someone will say, uh, this one, uh, I need some specific feature in this car, but the finance team will say, no, we don't have budget for that. So that should be some compromise between these two. 
So this kind of trade-off issues happen everywhere throughout the automotive development phase. And third is the cost control. As I said in the previous page, any design change you make it late will lead to unplanned cost. And more than that, any uh, misplan you make will also lead to uh, additional cost during the development. So planning should be perfect when you do a product development in automotive specifically. Fourth is the new regulations. Uh, as you can see, some uh, markets, some countries are imposing new regulations year on year. Uh, so if you are designing a product for some safety regulation this year, it will not be applicable for the next 10 years. Maybe in, in the next three or four years, there may be some new regulation. There will be some update in the regulation. Uh, the best example is BS6. Uh, so vehicles which, was, uh, which were designed for BS4, three years ago, cannot sell now. So we should have that forecast of what will be the future of the market regulations. And fifth is legal movements. Uh, legal movements uh, the, are basically the law, uh, laws and regulations proposed by the, each country. One good example is recently uh, the United Kingdom Prime, President or Prime Minister, I don't know, he announced that from 2030, uh, only electric vehicles will be sold in in uk there will be no petrol or diesel variants so this is one kind of uh, law which is proposed by the market but if you see most of the automobile manufacturers big sales market is europe but now because of this announcement their profitability will fall drastically so this kind of planning also should be considered and finally, the diversity. So one product doesn't suit all. You cannot produce just one, one model of car in your company and sell for all the markets. No, you have to have some 10 different varieties of cars you want to sell. And of course, if you increase the number of varieties, the complexity of development also increases. So everything should be considered in mind when you uh, do the product development in automotive mainly. So 